in nature everything is connected. That means we're all in circles. So that means as soon as we emit something that is not really belonging there, you will have an effect on the environment. There are five trillion pieces of plastic contaminate the global ocean surface. And what we do know is the vast majority of those particles are microplastics. Microplastics are carried into the drain system and the drain system is carried to the water treatment plants or directly into a local river. So therefore the microplastics can go either into the water environment, the marine environment or directly if small enough into the ambient environment. For me personally, and also for the other co-founders, we have a huge passion for water, especially sports and activities around water. I'm a sailor myself, we have surfers and divers, and that was also where we encountered plastic pollution years ago, which stimulated us to start brainstorming and thinking about solutions to stop that plastic pollution in rivers before it actually flow into the ocean. My name is Annemarieke Eveleins, I'm one of the co-founders of the Great Bubble Barrier. Recycling currently only happens for 14% of plastic, so it doesn't have that much of a significant impact on plastic pollution currently. One thing that is apparent now is that plastic pollution is a local problem, but it doesn't stay local. My name is Philip Erhorn, I'm Chief Technology Officer and one of the co-founders of The Great Bubble Barrier. We as the Great Bubble Barrier think that bubble barrier systems can be a very effective solution to stop the outflow of plastics from rivers into the ocean. The way the bubble barrier works is, if you think about the river, it will flow naturally and we're making use of that natural flow. Unlike other solutions where you have to place physical barriers, we're trying to be a non-invasive solution. So what we do is we just place a tube diagonally on the bottom of the river and that tube has a lot of tiny holes and then we pump air through it these air bubbles will rise to the surface. The rising will actually create an upwards water current, which can push the plastic, which is suspended underwater, to the surface, and then at the surface, together with the natural flow of the river, it's all pushed to one side, and that's where we place our catchment system. With the bubble barrier in Amsterdam, we were really keen to see how much plastic we're really collecting over a whole year, throughout the whole seasons because we do know there's a large variation in the amount, but also the types of plastics that you can catch in a river. We set up a monitoring program to evaluate the catch. In Amsterdam, the bubble barrier it has been designed to be emptied once per week. Currently, we have to empty it three times per week because we're catching that much pollution. So I would say the impact is bigger than we expected. Plastic leads to microplastics, and these either are so small that they can actually be caught by any wind that's present and taken up into the air. Microplastics in the oceans, most of them you don't see, but that doesn't mean that they don't have an effect. They not only contaminate the oceans, they contaminate food that we eat, drinking water, dust. Microplastics are definitely a more complex and more difficult problem to solve, mainly because of their size. They become really, really small, down to the point that there's even no technology currently exists that could effectively remove microplastics from the water, especially in open water and in natural water bodies. If we don't stop it in our rivers, it will become a regional problem and even an international problem where we have plastics traveling from the oceans into our seas and then basically to anywhere in the world. We have definitely not hit our, let's say, size limitation. We catch currently around 86%, which we think is very high for the fact that we can get the trade-off of not having to place a physical barrier, which in a lot of cases would not be possible, and we can still effectively catch plastic. Worldwide, we are facing the challenge that at the moment there is no policy that dictates on which organization has the responsibility to clean the waters from plastic pollution. We are working to overcome this and to make sure that it will become easier and easier for policymakers to implement solutions like our bubble barrier. So we help them getting the right permits to have the right tools to actually make sure that this can be implemented as soon and as fast as possible. 
A lot of people and governments always saying we need innovation and we need sustainability, but very often we don't have enough resources coming towards those innovative projects to actually do what they can do. Policy makers are at the top of the food chain, as it were. They have the ability to bring in major change. I think we are beginning to turn the corner and there seems to be enthusiasm for a green recovery. I think you can accelerate sustainable innovation. First, I'd say through awareness, because people need to know the problem to know what to innovate. The ultimate goal with our bubble barrier systems would be that we deploy them in almost any waterway and river where we have plastic entering the waterways. But also that we see what are these systems catching and can we learn from that so that we implement new measures on land so that in the future maybe we have no plastic ending up in the waterways in the first place and we can start removing our bubble barrier systems because they're not needed anymore.